accessibility and safety for all modes and okay and the difference between traffic impact assessment and transport impact assessment which is supposed to be this one is tpt transport is that traffic impact assessment only focus on the uh, car drivers car movement but for transport impact assessment it will focus for all types of transport which is including walking but we talk about pedestrian cycling cyclists and public transport and also lorries uh, commercial vehicle other commercial vehicle all right and when they project when they do the projection we can expect that in one development there will be a lot of transport coming in and going out from that particular um what we call that uh, area so because of that we can take measures to deal with all this impact with all this uh, what we call the the increase of transport because when the transport increase in one area it will impact the safety of that particular community the local community in that area so how you want to do this there is four level uh, not four level this is the standard transport impact assessment projection one is trip generation trip distribution mod choice and road assignment this is the basic one and in most uh, of transport impact assessment uh, what we call that uh, feasibility study this is the one they ask to submit to the government what is trip generation? All these are projection. They use the mathematical algorithm or model to calculate it. So the SQS student, those who love statistics, is really uh, need to link with the ITs now. This will actually help those consultant, those uh, planners to do this transport impact assessment. So what is the trans trip generation? Trip generation is where they predict the numbers of trip origin in, in, and destined for a particular traffic analysis zone. I give you example. This is the terminal. Okay, so for trip generation, it's from this terminal go out or from out to goes into the terminal okay. that is trip generation okay. how about trip distribution trip distribution is a trip table matrix we talk about them uh, doing the matrix table that display the number of trip going from each origin to each destination okay. going going from each origin and each destination okay we talk about this terminal and it's half shop here and then we have along the way we have another terminal we talk about rail okay? rail have several terminal and then how many people from here stop here and coming out how many people from here coming to this point a this one a this one b this one c kita guna color lain lah pula oh, how about how many passenger from terminal a going to c and coming out from here how many from c stop at b how many from c stop at a how many from b goes to c only how many from a goes to c only so 
that is strip distribution. Okay. And for trip as uh, trip distribution trip. Okay, root assignment. Before that, mode choice. Mode choice or model split. In some uh, books, it's called model split for transport impact assessment. This is actually, uh, we look into the factors. Why people choose that particular modes of transport? What is the influencing factor for the car owner? It based on the most of it because of the demographic. We talk about household, income, the distance of that particular transport facilities, the travel time, the travel cost, the car park availability. If, okay, if in one terminal, rail transport terminal, the car park is limited. For example, like, um, where, 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 where? It's not real. It's small terminal and the car park is limited. Um, for example, like Alusta. Alusta, because the location is in Alusta and it's built from the, uh, the, the location is near to the city center. It, they cannot uh, make uh what we call that big uh car park and even the when we when there is a time for the train to arrive the car queue to pick up passenger is so what so so many and it's a bit congested it's take around 10 to 15 minutes just to make a round take a passenger and come out from that particular terminal. There is a lot of uh, factors that influence mode choice of that particular uh, passenger. All right. So in, in terms of freight, there is a reason why people do not use rail and use freight transport. And the reason is very clear. One is if it urgent cargo, they cannot use uh, rail. If it's high value cargo, they use something else. If the cargo less than one container load, then they use something else. So in terms of passenger, we actually have option between road and rail. And if it's a ma urgent matters, we don't uh we don't take rail we either take air transport or road if you want more comfortable want to stop along the way so you may choose a uh, road transport car why because you can have a choice in terms of eating at an r and r and whatnot okay that is more choice. It's all on the passenger or, uh, or on the uh, freight company. Whatever it is, they still need to make a projection of that particular uh, travel behavior. So how they want to do that, that's why we have that social impact assessment. And... In some in 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 Malaysia, in Malaysia, we collect data. Actually, we collect data, uh, the existing one, the existing rail uh, transport, the existing data for rail transport, and then the change the the survey of uh, particular area, the local people, the change of travel. Uh, what we call that uh, travel behavior, the possible change of travel behavior, their intention to move and to change from road to rail transport. And then they calculate from that. Of course, based on all those variables, 
they do the projection. And the last one is root assignment. Root assignment is actually uh, in in some in some uh, what we call that in some books it said trip assignment. It's similar, all right? It's actually assigning traffic to a transportation network such as road, street, or transit network. This one use mathematical model, same like uh, trip generation, trip distribution. And it will determine the amount of traffic as a function of time, volume, capacity, or other impedance factor. Impedance factor is we talk about the situational factor. How we want to actually distribute the uh, people from one place to another so that that particular uh, development do not uh, congested with uh, people around it. Okay, some of it, okay, in, in some places, they do what we call as uh, one way. Uh, one way. There is a roundabout, so one way. So that uh, people goes in and goes out. So the flow of that traffic is being assigned so that they can easily distribute themselves. And the place is not congested unless or during certain certain time only so that is root assignment that is why oh, not really why that is what is transport impact assessment dia okay. what is it in this uh, elements in transport impact assessment all that is projection yes but what we will know when we do this transport impact assessment is the current transportation status, the existing one. Okay, when you know the, uh, when you want to know who the projection, you need to know the current status and then you can do the projection and then you can survey the intention, the, the knowledge of current status uh, status of transportation. That's why I ask you to actually know the history of the particular transport in that particular state or in that particular country so that you know whether real transport is suitable or not. The if, okay, if the, you, the country is actually poor, so poor. So what you want to do? You want to actually tell them and suggest something that very wow rail transport? Or you want to start with the acceptable, uh, what we call that? Not budget acceptable fares where the community there local people can pay and uh, one another thing is that when you build a real transport system it's not only for you it's for the economic development in that particular state or that particular country and it's also will actually create job for the community that is one. Another one is layout and design. Once we know how many passenger will come to the terminal A, okay, the projection, you can design whether the terminal can be big one or the small one. You can build the terminal with the three floor, one floor, or just two floor. That is why, and then you can 
plan for the whole space of parking place to uh to drop uh, passenger to drop road users and then the footpath for the pedestrian to go to the train station or come out from the train station the bus stop bus uh, feeder bus area and what not so that is why the uh, transport impact assessment is there and then they will also Based on that, we can check for the traffic risk assessment, public transport impact assessment, and pedestrian impact assessment. All these actually have in that four things. Okay. When we do the transport impact assessment, we want to know how the safety is. If there is a lot of uh, vehicle going into one place, so how you want to ensure that pedestrian safety? Is there any cyclist there? So how we want to ensure the cyclist safety? How about the parking? The space for parking. There are places where you, when you park, it, the, the place for parking is too, what we call that? Uh, it's not comfortable. Uh, for the for the MPV, the one that big size or long size of a uh, car to park. So all this uh will come up. Will come up. Actually, when you do this transport impact assessment, public transport impact assessment, this feeder bus, the bus, stage bus, and other bus and other public transport based on this projection, it's have impact. Like I said, for pedestrian and cyclists in that area, if you, if your train, train, you plan your train, but the developers want your train station in their place so that it can uh, create what we call as transit uh, oriented transit transport oriented development transit oriented development so if it's a in the area of uh, transit oriented development then the pedestrian and cyclist impact assessment really really important because they need to know whether what to actually build to to make sure that pedestrian and cyclist safe in that particular area from their home to the station and from the station to other places around it The importance of this transport impact assessment, we can see because it will become an, a catalyst for the economic growth. We are do the projection and because of that projection, it will slowly increase the economic surrounded area. Okay, And then to avoid wastage, if you, uh, because it's a public, when we talk about Rail transport, road transport, terminal or road, road. And then we have a air, airport. We also have seaport. All this transport impact assessment, when we build, when we use that, uh, when you do the analysis, we want to avoid wastage. We want to avoid what we call as white elephant. Some buildings built so big but after uh, what we call that two years after finish it you suppose uh, the project uh, what we call success but nobody's uh, want to use it anymore why because the location is not really suitable 
uh, actually the projection just the projection only is actually didn't impact everything so we want to avoid wastage for your information if uh, anyone anyone want to build transport infrastructure it's not easy it has several stage and you can see it uh, this year they plan whatever stated and put in the uh, paper you can see it and then you don't see the progress in 10 years five years it's not because there is no progress but because the the other procedures they need to submit to the government until the government said okay for the uh, what we call that financial matters and whatnot the last one but the 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 other one is more on technical aspect like this one they need to be clear and it's not uh to this one uh, to avoid wastage okay for kulim high tech for example kulim high tech airport uh, not Kulim High Tech Airport, sorry, KXP, the Kulim, uh, Kulim International Airport. If you uh, check in the internet, actually the talk about the Kulim International Airport is already uh, in since in 20, uh, 20, 2011, uh, 2011, okay? But the approval, the first phase approval, there are several phase approval, the first phase approval, just last year, I think, last year. Uh, the first phase approval, it's a half, half approval, something like that. They cannot, uh, what we call that, uh, they can buy the land, the, the, the land that they want to build for the airport okay and so the still still we talk about land acquisition there is certain process and all this process is a bit longer and then after that there is second phase approval and this second phase is very very critical so that uh the 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 what the overall development can be done okay and the next one is punctuality and safety safety for the local safety for the all transport user when they go to that particular terminal the punctuality when we know the projection what uh, to expect and what not you can actually help the royal company to make a schedule so that it's not only punctual and reliable but in terms of operation costs it's okay okay means that at least starting will be break even not loss every year for 10 years okay and another one is about the punctuality of the project. So, yeah, the infrastructure project, transport infrastructure project is not a uh, two years project like uh, what we call that, like housing project. Housing project is different, but still, still housing project or shopping complex project development they still need to submit the transport impact assessment to the uh, to the government agency related okay <clears throat> there are several issues that we discuss in TIA okay. one is the accessibility when we talk about the rail transport uh, line that's why it's is go back to the location of the terminal and traffic in the track, the location of the user and the connection with other modes transport. They want to look into this. Okay, it's very, very important. You build a 
terminal where people can't access. So why you build terminal in that area if people cannot access easily? <coughs> it also about the safety. We talk about the passenger, the good, the cargo, the local community. Okay, when we talk about cargo along the line, if it's a hazardous material, it's very dangerous if the track near to the local community. But sometimes we cannot avoid that. Okay, but if possible, for the cargo, not go to not go through local community unless there is a what we call that uh, stop where the the train driver can change or can uh, what we call that. Um, can stop for uh, rest okay <clears throat> why why because uh, if you check into the internet there is a uh, one tragedy one disaster happened where uh, the there is a runaway train. Runaway train means that the train didn't have brake, and there is no driver on it. It's uh, it's lost control, and it's carry um hazardous material, and it's burned because of that runaway train. Uh, it actually burned one town. Yeah, it's happened in somewhere in the West, if I'm not mistaken. Not, not cannot remember because I cannot. Uh, when uh, if you are uh, strong enough, you can see the video. I I don't see it all. I just read the in the Wikipedia. The video is there in the it's burn, uh, one town and. Some of the, uh, what we call that, they, they cannot be found after that. Even though the firefighter uh, take three days to control the fire and whatnot. But after that, all of it is burned to the ground. And many of them are actually uh, announced die because it's it's not uh they cannot found it actually there is uh kita cakap tak ada orang kata tanda dia hanya ada serpihan tulang saja ha okay. okay that's why i i don't i don't see that video i just read the story all right. Another one is the integration. Integration is between the government policy and the surrounded communities. Integration issue in transport impact assessment. When we talk about the government policy, we want to check the. Uh, it's not about only the road transport act and whatnot, but it's on the uh, engineering matters. All right, and then uh, the development matters. And then the surrounding communities, how it can integrate, uh, impact the the big impact to the communities and the local people in terms of the travel behavior and whatnot. And the last one is the environment. We talk about noise when we put when we build a rail for ETS service, for example. I give you example of monorail LRT. Although they use the Electric, the vibration is low, but there is a still vibration. The noise is still there. And in some places in Kuala Lumpur, all right, because of the noise, uh, because of the vibration, if the uh, flat, the apartment is too near 
to the rail track because the apartment is there. The rail track comes after that. So there will be a bit cracking. Okay. And, and because of the particular noise, because the noise will be there up to, I think, 12 midnight. So every time they move, there will be vibration. Every time they move, there will be a noise. So there, there are possibility that <clears throat> the value of that particular apartment will be dropped. Although it's near to the uh, LRT, but because of the noise and vibration, it will be dropped. Noise in long term, it will impact your hearing. Okay, vibration in long term, it will crack the building. That is the thing. Okay, another one is air quality. This one, if they use diesel, if they use electric, the air quality is quite okay. So, no need to worry. Okay, and the last one is the heritage of the historic resources and landscape. When you put rail transport, you will put not only terminal, it's a rail track along the way. So, how you want to ensure that you didn't demolish or you didn't uh, make the historical resources or landscape something bad? You, you need to make sure that everything is there. Because when we talk about landscape and rail, um, I don't know. I don't know you. But for me, I like to take rail because of the scenery and relax in the train. So I can see Sawapadi, Poco, uh, all those things, okay? Right. Okay, next one. Okay. This one, I ask you after this. Like I just said just now, the accessible transport, okay, is very, very important. And in transport impact assessment, it will help in actually to develop uh, accessible transport with all those projection. And when we talk about accessible transport, it can be accessed for all users. Accessed by all the public transport service. Uh, if we take, we talk about rail aircraft and marine vessel, it's intermodal linkage. All right. It's not just that. And then it can be accessed by the personal vehicle and there will be a pedestrian infrastructure in that uh, area. Okay. It's accessible for all the road users. We talk about disabled person, elderly people, people with children and people with heavy luggage. So, that is the thing. Normal people can walk, but all these people, they have limitation. So accessible need to be for all road, road user. And for train facilities, eh. oops. Right. For train facilities, in the train, you should have a priority seat. Of course, automatic train door system. And in case of emergency, there is a button for emergency. There is uh, all the tools that can help to breaking the window. The route identification and route assignment, usually on the top of the train for ETS, there is all the what we call that, uh, the LRT, MRT, monorail, there will be uh, like, uh, what we call that, information board, small information board saying that uh, where you are and what the next station is. So at the train terminal, 
you will have vending machine. Nowadays, most of the terminal have vending uh, ticket vending machine. Still have counter, still have the uh, ticket counter. But most of the passenger will, especially the urban, the one who usually use uh, transport, uh, you usually use uh, that particular transport service, they will just go to ticket vending machine. There will be a waiting room. It's not necessarily a waiting room. It's open place. Escalator and lift. This one is to help the normal and disabled people to move around. And this escalator and lift. Uh, lift is okay. The escalator, if you see, there will be one escalator just for go down. Alright. And then one is for goes up. And this uh, part. Uh, this escalator actually located not side by side, but in different places. Okay. And if it's we talk about the stairs, also same, there is a divider in the middle. So usually one is for goes down and another one is for goes up. All right. That is in terminal and of course you will have the tac tactile one warning strip this one is uh, like this one near yeah, especially in the platform and then train approaching announcement Okay, if you see this, this one is for uh, right. This one is for passenger with wheelchair or parents with uh what we call that kids uh in the stroller. On this one also actually is reserved. It can be flipped. This one is for. It shows that you need to actually give ways, give the seat to the elderly woman with children or pregnant woman. And yeah, I do not know you, but but in Australia, when if I am. I'm taking a bus. I'm still young. I'm taking a bus. Okay. Those who are in secondary school will actually stand. Stand up and ask me to sit down. And then I, I need to say, no, no, it's okay. I just uh, stop there. And then ask them to sit down. And then they will ask other people uh, to sit down. For them, as long as you are older than them, they will uh, offer the seat, okay? And that is the, what we call that, the culture that it's been trained since they are young. So everybody knows that uh, if it's pregnant woman, you see a pregnant woman, it's near to you, you need to stand up and give uh, the seat to them. Uh, if there is a, People with stroller, they will help actually the mother and give the seat to them and make sure that the stroller didn't move. And in fact, in the bus or in the train, in the developed country, there is a space in front for that uh, stroller. So the wheelchair also uh, can go in the bus not only in train. How they have, uh, how they want to do that, in some buses, in, in most buses or some buses, the floor is very low and it's actually almost same level to the uh, footpath. That's one. The second one, they have a uh, ramp or if there is no ramp, the driver will stop a bit longer and put the ramp and ensure that help the uh, wheelchair user to uh, 
get into the bus. Same goes to the train. Sometimes the train workers will help the not necessarily the drivers, but sometimes the train uh, workers will help because once uh, they they actually will notice the wheelchair, they actually will notice the disabled. They want they know that this person will always use that particular service, or even just once a month. All right. This is uh, the what we call that uh, the things that we in Malaysia uh, sometimes is lacking for the the attitude. Okay, so I hope that when you use a train, not the ETS service, because the ETS service you already got the seat number. I'm talking about the public transport, the bus with uh, the the train, uh, LRT, MRT, uh, monorail, during the non-peak hour, not the peak hour. Because the peak hour, if it's the person is really near to you, then you can uh, to offer your seat. But it's far, then no need. But uh, for the non-peak hour, if you see the person, you can uh, ask that particular person to come to near you and give your seat to, to him or her. If that particular person, for in your opinion, needed that seat most and you are okay with that and you, your stop is just another, uh, another uh, stop, something like that. Okay? But do not... Uh, don't be selfish when we use public transport. In other words, like that. Lah. All right. Okay. Okay. The one that I show you just uh, actually five type of train. This rapid transit is uh, for the LRT. Under the rapid transit, we have LRT, MRT, monorail, And then we have HSR, high speed rail. This one is for high speed rail. We also have commuter, <coughs> high speed rail and intercity train. We also have commuter. Commuter is between the suburban usually. And we also have tram in the city and monorail. Yeah. All these are quite detailed. Can read by yourself. I just jump to there is an example rapid transit in India, Canada, Singapore, tram. Uh, this is the tram, the one that I said it's on the ground, the track is there, and there is a electric on top. Okay, and the the tram now is modern tram. Uh, this is the old style tram. The stop is like a bus stop, and it's in city center. And usually tram been built not in the congested city. It's a very relaxed city. And that particular area do not have a lot of car going in. The commuter is easy to 
easy to understand because it's there uh, in Kuala Lumpur. Oops. And then this is monorail. <coughs> there are two types. One, one monorail is uh, like this one, above one. The other monorail is like this one. It's also called monorail. I think I need to stop that, this. Yeah, okay. This is some of the technology being used in overseas. This one is the lift for disability people. And I see cheap for impact <coughs> vision people. Okay, I want to show you the comparison. What's the difference between rapid transit, tram, monorail, computer, and HSR? The similarity is that they carry a lot of passenger. For rapid transit, usually it's located in urban area in and in some places it have you will have it underground okay a tram usually in the middle middle of the city and it have track along the public urban area near to shopping complex near to uh, pedestrian uh, mall place where a lot of pedestrian and the car not really goes into that area. It's been blocked. Okay. You will have, you will see a lot of bicycle there. And because it's slow move, yes, 50 km per hour, but you need still uh, caution about it. Uh, so far, rarely, uh, rarely found any accident. There is accident. We I don't say it's not, but but it's very rare because not only the tram is fifty kilometer per hour, but the area that put the tram is more on the uh, public urban area where they already uh, block from the rail uh, from the car. There is also a uh, tram with the car but it's a bit congested compared with just tram and and the pedestrian happily walk around and the cyclists also happily cyclists around okay. for monorail it's actually operate in single rail and typically elevated it's always up Okay, not rapid transit. Rapid transit, there is up and underground. But monorail is always up. Up there, elevated. Like this one. Okay. It's have one beam. Single rail. Commuter is higher speed. And much more longer compared with the others. And it's usually between the suburban. What is suburban? Suburban is uh, small, small town along the way. For example, we have uh, Nilai, we have Kajang, we have Bangi, we have uh, what else after Kajang? Uh, Serdang, and then after that. Uh, we have another stop in uh, I cannot remember. Okay, that is commuter rail, and the speed is a bit higher from the other one, all this one, but but it's not so high compared with high speed rail. High speed rail, the pr 
the speed usually 350 km per hour more and it's long distance usually between main city and between state and it's have few station to stop not all the station okay that's why if you choose the ETS service you will see that you will arrive at Kuala Lumpur four and a half hours if you choose uh, another service commuter you will stop several station and chain station and whatnot and you will arrive at uh what we call that Kuala Lumpur six hours and a half if I'm not mistaken so there is a commuter from Aral to Alosta if you want to take that if you want to have the experience, take commuter. If you don't have that particular experience, you, I, I, I do not know whether you have take a ride with a train or not. But I'm suggesting that since you, most of you are in UUM, if you are going back to your hometown, just nearby, for example, Alusta, take a ride with a commuter from Arau to. Um, Alusta, just just get an experience, and then uh, if you are going to Batuas, don't take the commuter. Just take a ETS, and if commuter is uh, ETS is not stop in the Batuas, then take the ETS and uh, take the commuter. Sorry, mm. it's you can get the experience when you get the experience in transport. In transport, I believe that when you have the experience, then you can easily relate to all the subject that you learn. Either it's rail, either it's road, either it's uh, seaport, sea transport, maritime and whatnot, air transport. If you don't have that particular experience, what you can do and uh, the easiest way is... Uh, to actually experience it through the YouTube and see the videos. Okay, any questions so far? We finished lesson 3. Alhamdulillah. Alright, okay. I stop sharing this one. Uh, saya lupa nak buka Mentimeter. Sekejap ya. Eh, mana dia? Oh, lama. Sekejap. Sorry. Transport planning. Alright. Okay. Oh, one question from uh, your friends, Lau Jun Ziang. Bullet train consider HSR? Yeah, bullet train consider HSR. J just that in Japan, we call it bullet train since 1970s. Because that is the first high-speed rail in the world. Then after that, everybody want to copy them. Okay. I give you the link of Mentimeter. Why transport assessment is important? Give your, uh, give, put your matrix number and answer it. 
I give you three minutes. Eleven five. I share QR code. Easy question. Why transport impact assessment is important? Sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, before that, uh, please put your matrix number. How come I want to give you marks if you don't put matrix number? Ah, thank you. Okay, yes. The Nityananda. How can I can call you? Nitya, doctor. Ni huh? Nityan. Oh, yeah, doctor. Okay, Nityan. So, just, All right. uh, just now, just now showing the last week. That's right. Oh, okay. <laughs> now you see the transport impact assessment? Right. Uh, okay. You must be joking. You are copy from the. Are you copying from the notes? 